My dear brothers and sisters, this Lenten season, as we continue to reflect on baptism and what it means to live life in the Holy Spirit, we look today at how we are called to be temples of the Holy Spirit, how God calls us to live with such a presence within us that he can make of us a temple. Last week, we learned about letting it go and knowing that God is God and he's the one in charge. This week, we see how much in charge he is. He comes to his temple with zeal. And he comes to us as well. In baptism, we are made temples of the Holy Spirit. In the catechism we read, baptism not only purifies from all sin, but also makes the newly baptized person a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now we want to unpack that a little bit. A temple of the Holy Spirit. That basically means that the same way that God is present here through the Eucharist here in this church, in the body and blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, Likewise, God is present in us through the Holy Spirit by virtue of our baptism. St. Paul goes even more to say to us, he says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? And he warns us, brothers and sisters, he warns us, Imagine somebody coming into this church and throwing a whole bunch of trash inside here. We would certainly be upset, and we would certainly avoid that. And yet we want to look at the trash that we allow to enter our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. Especially the trash that is prevalent in our society, the trash of pornography. This is what St. Paul says. He says, avoid sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but sexual immorality, the person who commits this, sins against his own body. And he even says, if anyone destroys God's temple, that is, one's own body, and the fact that one is a temple of the Holy Spirit, God will destroy that person. God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. I'd like to speak of a story of a man who got destroyed, we'll say in quotes, by God because he had destroyed God's temple. The man is a gentleman by the name of Alessandro Serenelli, and he lived in Italy in the town of Nettuno in the early 1900s. Now, We probably wouldn't think much of this Alessandro except for the fact that he had a neighbor by the name of Maria Goretti. And Alessandro began to live a life of dissolution. He would get himself hooked on looking at images that were not pure pornography. And he worked himself up so much that he began to make suggestions to the 11-year-old Maria about how he wanted to do certain things with her. And then one day he decided he was going to threaten her that unless he gave, unless she gave him his way, he was going to kill her. She, choosing to be a saint and saying no because it would have been a mortal sin, realized that she was going to be killed. And Alessandro, indeed, stabbed her 14 times. She didn't die immediately. She was taken to the hospital. He was arrested. They tried to save her life. And the priest asked her, as they were doing the surgery, and as she was asking for water, and they couldn't give her any water because she had been stabbed in the abdomen, he said, Maria... Jesus on the cross asked for water but did not receive any. Would you offer your thirst for sinners? And she said, yes. And though the surgeon performed the surgery without any anesthesia, she did not utter one complaint. 
When they realized that the surgery was not successful and that she was indeed going to die, she said, I forgive Alessandro and I want him to be where I am in heaven. Alessandro was thrown into prison for 30 years. And there he was so violent they couldn't keep him in the same company as the other prisoners. He kept saying, it's all her fault. It's all her fault. Well, one day, Maria appears to him at night and offers him 14 white roses. 14. One for each of the stab wounds. And he's a changed man. All of a sudden, he goes from being this violent man to being completely changed. He goes to the sacrament of reconciliation. His life is so different, they decide to let him out three years early, which back in the day did not happen. And he went, and he went and apologized even to Asunta, Maria's mother. And that evening, they both went to Mass. It was Christmas Eve, and they received communion together. And he lived as her son until she died. They were both present at Maria's canonization. And he said, in his later years, he said, Woe to those who get themselves caught up in such evil. I wish I never had. And he went off and he lived a holy and saintly life. A holy and a saintly life. We see what this means, brothers and sisters. That there is much hope for us. We don't need to go into much detail to know what kind of immorality is out there. We only need to look at the newspaper and see how in even our high schools there is this blatant disregard for the body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. The body as something that is called to co-create with God. The body of a woman that is called to be a tabernacle of new life. And therefore should be treated with as much respect as this tabernacle here. Brothers and sisters, if we ask the world what the Catholic Church believes about sexuality, they would say, oh, the church thinks that sexuality is something bad. It wouldn't be anything farther from the truth. Because as Catholics, we recognize this dignity, this beauty that comes with that gift, the power to give new life, the power to express a close, intimate love in the flesh. And just as no man would dare come and celebrate the Mass here in front of this tabernacle, without first dedicating himself completely to the church, Christ's bride. Likewise, no man should dare to offer the gift of his sexuality before the tabernacle of a woman unless he has consecrated himself to her completely to the sacrament of matrimony. We might ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, what are we to do? Much like Isaiah, we might say we are a people of unclean lips and a generation of unclean lips. But we need not be afraid. Again, we see that Jesus is zealous for us. He comes to his temple and he comes to purify it. And he says, if you destroy this temple, I will rebuild it. We see God offering his commandments to his people Israel. And he's not offering them a burden. Because first, he gives them the gift of himself. He says, I am giving you my name. I am he who am in your midst. I am making you my people. I am dwelling among you. I am making you my tabernacle. And empowering you to live a holy life. Now, here are the ways I wish you to respond to that gift. To live holiness because I have made you holy. We remember what was going on at the time. The people had been enslaved. God appeared among them, and he liberated them from that slavery, 
and then gave them the law. Likewise, brothers and sisters, Jesus dies for us, sheds his precious blood for our sanctification. And we enter into that in baptism when the Holy Spirit comes and indwells in us, driving away evil. And if we have defiled our temples, we need not be afraid. There is always the sacrament of reconciliation that gives us that purity again, that holiness again. So keeping in mind God's zealousness for us is the first thing that we can do. Second thing is that we keep in mind our dignity as temples of the Holy Spirit to recognize that we have God within us. Because then that gives us pause. What am I doing? What am I doing with my body? Am I glorifying God with my body? Am I giving glory to love and to goodness? Or am I making it cheap? But also we can make friends, brothers and sisters, with the saints. Saints just like Maria Goretti. Saints like St. Rita of Cascia. St. Margaret of Cortona. St. Gerard Magella. And our very own St. Thomas Aquinas. Saints who struggled with temptation, even fell into sin, but with the help of God, were able to come and overcome those sins. If we find that we are struggling with the addiction of pornography, and this is not just something for young men anymore, it is a problem that spans the generations and the genders. We can always talk to our pastors, or a professional, we can join a support group. And I recommend this book, delivered by Matt Frad, F-R-A-D-D, put out by Catholic Answers Press. Because it gives powerful testimonies of men and women who overcame that addiction, who remembered that they were made to be temples of the Holy Spirit, God living in them. Most importantly, though, We know that we can pray. We can ask God very simply. Come Holy Spirit. Come and enlighten our hearts and our minds in regard to sin. Especially those sins which defile our bodies. Which were made to be your holy temples at baptism. May you convict us of our guilt. Inspire us in hope of forgiveness especially in reconciliation. And by the power of your love and grace, may we be encouraged that both you and Jesus are zealous in purifying us as we surrender our lives more and more to your action and your mission here at this altar. Your mission to make us holy temples, glorifying God in and through our bodies.